Namaste, yogis. Welcome to the Happy Jack Yoga Podcast. We're super excited to be here today. I'm Happy Jack, live from Harvard Innovation Lab in Boston, Massachusetts, USA, and always here live with... Happy Hanna, and I am in Bracebridge, Ontario, Canada. Yeah, and, and Hanna, very, very energetic today. We were just talking, we were right before this call, we were leading a... Uh, we are leading a 25-hour course for yoga teachers on using technology, artificial intelligence, social media. We got our friend Brandon supporting that. Um, but you know, while we had all the students in a breakout room, Hanna, you shared you shared with us uh, a little experience that you did today, unplanned. Please share. What the <laughs> heck did you do? So um, I went to my workout every morning. I go to a workout at 6 a.m. And last week. I did a cold plunge and it was really, really cold in Canada, like minus, I don't know how many minuses that day, but super cold and the lake was frozen and I felt so energized afterwards. And today I hadn't planned. I went to my workout, but I, and I was, while I was working out, I was thinking like, I would love to, you know, have that feeling leading these calls, calls today, but I didn't bring my stuff to go do a cold plunge in the lake. So then instead I came home and put on my bikinis and jumped into the snow in my backyard and that was quite fun i can tell you and That's also awesome. similar impact it's true it energizes me it totally does it's a total physiology shift the science is there I see Sue. Sue Sue is thinking to herself, "Oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to do that tomorrow." No, I bet she's not. <laughs> but like, really, it's what a way to wake up. And and I could I could sense it. Like when yeah. you when you come onto Zoom today, just like there's a different energy when we when we do these kind of physiology shifts. So, very yeah. very cool. Yeah, love that's it. So fun. That's the main thing. Have fun. What is and yesterday on the course? Brandon left us with that nugget. As we embrace this technology, let's have fun. Yeah. Let's have fun. And that's gonna it's gonna fit into one of our topics today. Love so it. with that, we uh we welcome everybody. We got 11 yogis live around the globe. Uh honored to have you here with us. And thank you for everybody who's listening on the podcast. Do you know who else we have to thank, Hanna? No, who is that? We we gotta thank our Patreon members. Yay. We, got, we got some Patreon members that are you know keeping this this ship floating, and uh, you know for the price of a cup of coffee per month, five bucks a month, uh, we appreciate it. It's mm. what Patreon.com forward slash Happy Jack Yoga unlocks some cool yoga content and allows us to to keep doing this every week, no matter what. Every week we get to meet in here and, and have a great conversation. So thank you um, for those that that. Uh, contribute i can't help but notice brand is holding a little kitten that's cute <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool good vibes everywhere we look it's so cute the kitty is putting his paws or her paws onto brandon's face like nice <laughs> so cute. i used to have i grew up having so many cats like i mean not all at once but we always had cats at least two all the time uh, misu was one of the names very finnish cat name misu Misu. Yeah. Misu. It means like kitty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he was big, but yeah. Misu. <laughs> he was really big. Enough cats, enough animals, such good, good things happening. Um, so the first thing I wanted to share a little bit about, and I'm happy that our, our dear friend Wandering Alice is, is on the line because she's been uh, she's been along with me navigating the Yoga Sutras uh with Edwin Bryant. And I, I just want to put this out at the start. You know, I got a few updates and something I just want to throw out right at the beginning. I thought it was interesting. And this is a perspective. So I'm not saying this as uh, the truth, as the only way to interpret yoga or that how we should see yoga. Uh, but let's understand uh, what Patanjali, his intention was with the yoga sutras. And and essentially, I mean, that yoga means... There's a little... And some cutting out again. That. Yoga means oh. yo. I'm cutting out right when the goods part is coming. <laughs> yoga means oh yeah. It's try. Is there somebody? Somebody's trying to uh, uh, not have me say this because it's uh, oh, it's out of our comfort zone. Yoga means giving up our desires. And some of us might hear that and think like, oh, but 
what if we have good desires or like I desire to want to be a good person or a desire to, you know, want to help people or, you know, we can come up with a story, but, but truly classical yoga, Patanjali yoga is meant to give up our desires. And, and professor Bryant really said, if we're honest with ourselves, it's probably like 0.1% of us who are really ready and willing and prepared to embrace this style of yoga, right? To give up our desires, myself included. I mean, I got to be honest. Like I, every day I do things to to feel good, to move my body and to supplement and nutrition. And I have, I have desires, but let's understand that that's what it is. And, and he was saying, so basically classical Patanjali yoga is about giving up your desires. And for most of us though, what, what we are looking for, what we're seeking is dharma, like really living our dharma. Our friend Pam from Kansas City, who was just on the last call, is like all about dharma. And so like if we don't want to give up our desires, then let's consider following our dharma and, and living piously, living, living as good people in the material world. Or can we use desire in a in a good way in a divine way like in Pakti yoga you would use desire to god to connect with god to have a relationship with the divine absolutely absolutely so that's that's where we have to make the distinction and that's where my where i'm drawn and perhaps yourself as well hanna and and alice who's here and others uh, in bhakti it that is where we can we can embrace um, in fact, I was just reading a book by Prabhupada last night, and like most transcendentalists and most saints and sages are more kind of like a Tanjali, where they're trying to renounce the world and simplify and go, you know, just deep into these practices. But the the bhakta, the bhakti yogi is like, actually, how can I use all these resources? This is what Prabhupada did. And, and he took criticism for it. Some people called him a capitalist. Right. They thought like here he's raising money and opening big temples and doing these big things. But he he felt that like we can use material elements. We can use the material world to to help people spiritually. And so this this is the, the vision of a bhakti yogi. And certainly, I mean, at its core, bhakti yogi, it would be that having desire for the divine, like seeking that divine relationship. So great distinction. I'm glad that you bring that up um, with purely within the context of yoga sutras, um, then it's, it's different. So this is where it's understanding what is yoga for each of us. Yeah, I love that. And it's, it's even, even still, I think the conversation uh, around desires, what the, what are the real needs and what are just desires and and what that says says about us and our spiritual path and what are the things we desire and why yeah i know it's so my goodness i'm i'm like navigating this right now it's so i don't know what the word is tricky or delicate or because i can talk myself into or out of anything or i can i can justify anything like i i feel like all the stuff i'm doing is good i'm not doing i'm definitely not doing anything inherently bad but it's like it's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do this thing to take care of my health, or I'm gonna, you know, Hanna, you, you recommended some cream that because my face and my hands were getting dry, and so I get, you know, I buy some cream so that I, you know, so I, so my, I, my body is not dry, and it's just obviously that's not bad in any way, but there's like little attachments that we have. It's like, oh, do I, am I worried about the, you know, wrinkles on my skin, or like, why am I really doing it? I tell myself I'm taking vitamin C because, you know, because I want to stay healthy so that I can serve and do my work, which is true. Uh, but how is is there some selfishness in that as well? Every time that we do things to take care of ourselves, I'm just I'm just in the inquiry. It's kind of tricky. It's interesting. Yeah, I love that that you ask yourself those questions and. And there's, I, I think it's quite a deep and big conversation and that there might not be a simple, straightforward, easy answer. Yeah. What the desire, like on one hand, yes, 
we do have a human experience and and that happens to be inside a body <laughs> right and so body comes with needs kind of like a baby you have to take care of it you have to you know wash it and feed it and make it put it to sleep otherwise it doesn't work and yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. It's it's true. And it's, it's great. I see in the chat, Alice is saying she's been having the same kind of line of questioning and considering her desires more carefully, understanding which ones are for the mode of goodness, sattvic. And, you know, it's, it's, I think it's just good being in this inquiry. This is a big part of, of what being a yogi is and educating ourselves and informing ourselves in the spirit, in, just on this topic, we kind of went on a little tangent here, but in the in the inspiration of last week where we got crazy and went spontaneous, I'm going to jump down to my last point because I feel like it, uh, it fits in well here. And it's with regards to like my morning spiritual practice. And it's it's such a sacred time when we're doing, it's called Mangala Arti. And, and there's a few different mantras that we chant. I I chanted the the Narsimha Dave prayer this morning again. It's so, so beautiful, but I'm just like I'm just really aware. Are you sure something about the that mantra Narsimha Dev? Would that fit in? It totally could. Yeah, um, some little bit so that we understand what that means, what that is like. Yeah. I, are you? Can you hear me? Okay, because yeah. it feels like my screen might be. You're fine kind of now. Slow. I'm good. Yep. Uh, my I have an internet screen, but it won't it won't open. So there must be a lot of uh, important work happening here at the Harvard Innovation Lab. People are st streaming a lot of services all at the same time. Because actually, what I wanted to do, I wanted to pull up the lyrics and sing it. So if mm -hmm. I can't, if I'm not able to do that quickly, um, so Narsimhadev is a, a lion god. Is that yeah. correct? That's that's correct. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to. I should have. I'm trying to find the Sanskrit. Anyway, so, well, while I talk, Hanna, see if you can pull up the the lyrics and send them to me in Sanskrit. Namaste Narasimhaya. Da 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 da. Um, and I'll mute you just while you're typing. <laughs> Here we are. We're not prepared today. We're getting messy. No, but what I wanted to share about my morning spiritual practice, I'm really, this This is sound conceptual. The first thing I shared is kind of that I'm aware of my opportunity for growth. And, and what I mean by that is that I continue to catch myself. I continue to catch myself. How do I say this nicely? Like having an opinion about others or, you know, said said bluntly you know having having a judgment or a criticism towards others and and uh, not not anything new not anything bad but just as we're doing the prayer like if i see some some other young devotee who's like falling asleep you know i'm 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 like self-righteously thinking like hey you know yeah i go to bed early and make sure i get a good night's sleep and and you're you're staying up too late and and then coming in and not having a proper practice and i'm just when when this comes up it's like i don't i don't want to think that i don't want to have those thoughts i want to i, I want to get to a place where i just have more compassion and more understanding and and in fact that that particular devotee who who i who is often sleeping in the morning um today Today he came up to me after the practice and he said, "Wow, that was really beautiful." The singing the Narsimhadev prayer, you know, he's like, "I really felt the emotion." He said, and 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 I said, "You know, thank you for your kind words." And and I used it as an opportunity to to talk with him about his sleep because <laughs> he, you know, he he he's a PhD student at MIT, so he's like, you know, super super smart, super committed, working very hard. And I see him, he sleeps on the floor by choice. You know, there's there's available bunk beds, but he sleeps on the floor and he sleeps in the room with the lights on, like bright fluorescent lights on all night long. And there's and there's also like uh, alarms going off and it's really not a conducive environment. Um, let's get let's get you back here, Hanna, because I want to be talking to you. So I sent you an email. Can you open your email? Yeah, but let me let me finish what I'm saying here. But let me get, come back with me. I'll, I'll check the email in a second. 
so, but just kind of being aware, um, you know, that I don't, you know, I guess the first step is awareness of ourselves and how these judgments come up and how these criticisms come up. Um, but yeah, it's like, I guess I'm just aware of aspects of myself that I don't love. And, and to, frankly, like this might seem too strong of a word, but it's like, it's ugly. It's, and what I mean by that, it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to be a that person, kind of person. Yeah. That, that I, has that kind of judgment or that kind of thought. And of course I don't say anything bad to anybody, <clears throat> but instead of even jumping to, instead of even jumping to having that, that opinion, you know, I, I would love to just have compassion. I mean, mm. can we, can we get there? You can, but I think it's uh, really important that first of all, that you're aware of that and that you notice when it happens. And then the reason oftentimes I think that we project things onto other people like judgments and criticism and like dislike and all of the negative options, <laughs> mm -hmm. because these are parts of ourselves that we haven't fully accepted or integrated or don't want to kind of accept or see in ourselves. So parts that I don't love about myself, I might then criticize in others and and have opinions about it and want to change and judge. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I mean, it probably it's because it's it too is. painful to accept that I too would be a sleepyhead or whatever the things is that 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 this person brings up in you or the thoughts that this person brings up in in you, you know, and that's something you could talk, talk with Danya about and see what she says. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. My therapist and get a sense, get some tips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's like this, I guess this is the, the opportunity that we have as yogis to, to explore this. And, um, yeah. And again, it's a, a quite nuanced and complex, just like the conversation on desires and which desires are good and not, you know, it's like an inquiry that might yeah. happen over a longer period of time might not be uh, figured out in one conversation or in one you know meditation or like that yeah to but, discover. but something else that i realized today i realized this morning and i didn't i just came to my mind right now at the click of it like we can build momentum like here i'm going to share a few things that that happened this morning that really built some beautiful momentum and I'm not doing it to say, hey, look at me, I'm some good person or a saint, but just because because most of the time I'm not. Um, but there I I got some really good momentum of being of being of service. And so this morning, you know, whatever, 5 a.m. Uh, or whatever time it was early in the morning, I noticed there was some spilt milk. And, you know, don't cry over spilt milk. Haha. <laughs> no, but anyways, I saw a little bit of spilt milk. And probably like a few people ran past it and hadn't picked it up yet, just because people are like, you know, getting to morning program on time. And and I thought, you know what? I've got a second. I'm going to go get a paper towel and I clean up that spilt milk. No big deal, right? But I, I, I also could have just ignored it like like some others did. And eventually somebody would have got it. And so then I did that thing and it, and it, felt, it felt good. Nobody saw. I didn't do it for credit. I'm not, I'm not telling you for credit, but just for the point. But then, then when I went for my morning walk, when the sun was coming up, which I do every morning, I noticed uh, this sign that had been blown over by the wind. And, and you know, you see all kinds of things when you're walking. You can't go fix everything. But I was like, hey, I want to pick up this sign and, and fix this sign. You know, and, and, and so I did that. Again, nobody saw, but it's just like, oh, it felt like a nice thing to do. And then, and then I got back from... Um, I got back and I was taking a shower after my workout and stuff. And there was, uh, you know, hair, hair in the shower drain. I know kind of gross, but it happens. And it was all black hair, right? Because everybody else living there has black hair because they're from India, except me. And I thought instead of, you know, waiting for somebody else to do it, I'm just going to pick it up and put it in the garbage. You know, again, nobody saw, I'm not telling you guys for brownie points, but there was like some momentum that happened. It's like, like, these are things that I would have before just ignored. It's like, well, that's not my hair. It's not my sign. I didn't spill the milk. I, I'm busy. I don't have time to do all these things, but it actually, it felt good to do it. And it just somehow created some momentum. Now, you know, Hannah, 
if we open it up, Hannah could tell you all kinds of stories where I, I'm selfish and that's not, there's not my natural default way of being. Um, but this is like, I guess it was, it was a really nice experience and to know that this is what's possible. And maybe some of this comes from, from doing the practice and being in the inquiry and wanting to be a better person. And, and it's just like, it's all connected in a way. Yeah. I love that. And I love how it makes you feel. And when I hear you share that, it makes me think and feel like when I do those things, it feels like I'm fully participating in life, that there's, that I am an act, like I take my own power into my own hands and I co-create with the world and it, and the world is kind of like a community and, and there's a deeper meaning at, like that. Just like a yoga teacher will do this when the new yogis come into the room and everybody's worried about where they're gonna put their mats and do they have their yoga pants and all the things that they need for yoga and everybody's in their head, but then the teacher comes and maybe meets you and, and connects with you and helps everyone come together. It's a different experience because Again, we fully participate in life as we initiate things and not just sit there waiting for somebody else to come and take care of everything and make life beautiful and only participate when I'm in a good mood or, you know, like, that's why what I love about this share, Jack, that, that you choose to actively, you know, take action interact with the world <laughs> and there's many ways of doing that right yeah and it feels yeah, it, good I mean, it <laughs> does like it, it feels good deepens it, your life experience it totally and at the same time i mean i'm still i'm no saint right i mean no. like i'm this is new this is new stuff mm -hmm. new territory but it's so true uh, because i think it's this is why it's again using that word ugly like or at least i don't know if that's the right word but not being who i want to be because there, because I think a lot of time there's like some level of entitlement. And what I mean by that is like, you know, what is, what is my job? What, what is my mess? What's not my mess? What is my responsibility? What's not my responsibility? I love that. I love that. That's so powerful. The sense of entitlement. Like I totally recognize that in myself as well. And when I do put that to the side, my world becomes bigger. I, I have more room to interact and and put that type of boundaries that are just kind of shrinking to the side and again life becomes more interactive and miraculous and magical in the small things like picking up garbage or connecting eyes with the stranger and caring about the world and the people in it and not having a boundary between us you know it's but pretty, go yeah. back to that sense of entitlement. I love that you bring that up. Yeah, exactly. And that's it's it's good to realize perhaps who we've become, how we've been conditioned, how we've been influenced, whether it's by parents or peers or environment. And and this is a big part of the yoga is waking up. And 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 this is this is our opportunity and coming back to the styles of yoga, right? Patanjali yoga, you know, freeing ourselves of desire. Right. But then bhakti yoga actually is about having having the greatest desire and attraction in the world for divinity. And then, you know, maybe somewhere in the middle, um, kind of doing our dharma and acting piously and, and being a good person. And and it's like, I guess that's where it's delicate and sensitive because it's somehow I'm having a lot more awareness. And I don't think I think if anything, for sure, I'm becoming a better person. But at the same time, I'm becoming aware of my weaknesses. So in a way, it's like every day that goes by, I'm like more aware of my weaknesses and the things that I don't love about myself. So it it almost feels like I'm going backwards, but it's not. It's 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 more just like waking up to where I've been out of integrity, where I haven't been my best self. And this is it's interesting. Yeah, and it's it's almost like um <clears throat> It's a practice. It's not about being perfect or becoming perfect or doing the perfect thing, but it's about doing the right thing and, and feeling it as you do it, like the capacity of being present to what's happening and how we participate and, you know, 
being fully here interacting you know and co-creating hopefully something beautiful a, a more beautiful world with our participation rather than sitting and expecting everyone else to do it for you <laughs> right. and 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 it's beautiful that you're awakening to this and <clears throat> even if it might feel like you're going backwards i don't think so at all and and these are like practices just like all the other practices that you're engaged in and not every time can we do all the things that we would want to but the easy things that are kind of fall in our lap where we can put the garbage or you know pick up the milk and you know smile at someone or help mm -hmm. someone when because it's easy mm -hmm. you know almost like an experiment almost like saying yes to life mm. yeah yeah it's, it's it's good it's 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 so beautiful this uh this practice and like who would think it's like it, it kind of doesn't make sense or you don't see how like normally like i i studied engineering and then and, and then business and it's kind of like you know it's, it's other things can be more clear it's like you do this you put in this input you get this output but it's not so clear when you know we do yoga practice and we chant mantras and we pray and we and we and we do this kind of worship and devotion you know, it, there's no manual that says, you know, oh yeah, the, this is what's going to happen. You're going to notice, you know, but it's, it, it just, it really wakes us up. And this is, this is, this is what yoga is. It's pretty cool. This is what yoga is. And it's not transactional. It's not that we do this in order to get points, <laughs> you know, right. It's not that we breathe so that, you know, like, then we are good human beings. We do it because it's part of the human experience. The body needs it. And we collaborate and say yes to life because we are here and we have a choice. We have free will, right? And so what are we going to do with this one life? How are we going to participate, right? Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's part of being a yogi. And I would want to say it's not about the transaction value like you're saying when you first started talking about this you said i'm not sharing this to get brownie points you're not participating in life in order to get brownie points <laughs> it's like a balancing thing of course we have needs and we have desires and we have duties and then we have things where we can choose to participate and or not and we have deepening life experiences which is when we say yes to life when we participate from a deeper place doing small things kind of like what's that saying that you often say like simple life clear mind or something like that oh simple living and high thinking yeah 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 totally this is and it feels good i'm really i didn't even think about sharing this before but it's i think it's a really nice conversation that ties in well and and kind of interesting like the the next aspect I wanted to talk about here, which is another element of living and life, um, very different than this kind of deep self-inquiry. But listen, though, we can't yeah. forget about the Narsimha Dev. Oh, yeah. If, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if I got you the right one. Can you see the orange text should be the I, one? I found, and I found one on my okay. phone, yes, okay. just to make sure. All right, so here, here we go. I'll share. So if everybody wants to well, you can, can you say what I, it's about or will you say it later? Like, what does it mean to you? It means, so Lord Narsimha Dave is, is, um, is divinity, is the supreme and, and really there for protection, for our protection. So there's, you know, beautiful, I won't tell the whole story. Maybe on a future podcast, I'll prepare and tell more of the story. Um, but he's really there to protect us. And when we, when we are good yogis, when we are good people, um, just really having faith that uh, we will be protected from from evil from bad forces etc so this is the prayer when we went to that retreat in uh west virginia a few weeks ago and it was so beautiful because we got into the van and and i'm there with a family and there's mom and dad and two little girls you know who are like four and six or i don't know six and eight like really young and and just like spontaneously like the they just together sang the prayer 
Nobody had to say, hey, guys, let's do this. This is what they do when they're getting ready to do a car trip, you know, really just praying for their safety to be taken care of. Um, so that's that's really what this prayer is about. And we and we sing it every morning at the ashram. And so I, I sing it every morning on Tuesday mornings. So let's see. I, I've been leading two call in my you know second hour of leading uh, calls. So we'll see how my voice does. But I'll I'll share this with you. And and by the way, normally it's a call and response, um, but I don't know if that's going to work so well. So I'll just I'll sing it. Okay. Namaste Narasimhaya. Pralada Lada Dayine Hiranya Kashi Purvakshaha Shila Tankana Kalaye Ito Narsimha Parato Narsimha Yato Yato Yamitato Narsimha Vahir Narsimha Hridaye Narsimha Narasimhamadim Sharanam Prapadye Tavakara Kamalavare Nakam Adbuta Shringam Dalita Hiranyakashipu Tanu Bringam Keshavadrita Narahari Rupa Jai Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jai Narsimha Dev Jaya Narsimha Dev Jaya Narsimha Dev Jaya Narsimha Dev Jaya Pralad Maharaj Jaya Pralad Maharaj Jaya Pralad Maharaj Jaya Pralad Maharaj Hare Krishna. Hare ah. Krishna. Yeah, my voice is getting a bit tired, but it's 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 a really beautiful prayer that we sing call and response every morning and and it's for our protection, you know, connect calling out to the divine and just a beautiful way to start the day. Um, so thank you for that invite. And I, if you put in the chat there, if you type for Yada, she's asking the name of, if you want to type it. And it's and what, uh, Sri Narsimha Dev Pranama, or what's the actual right. name of it? That's right. Narsimha Prana, Pranama. Pranama. Mm -hmm. The author is Vyasadev. So what I, um, what I wanted to shift from here, you know, we were talking about some real deep inquiry right which is possible from this practice of yoga so i'm also taking this course here over at the harvard divinity school called ritual and the life cycle and uh and last week we talked about play play and you know something i realized hanna is that you know i need more play in my life i know you see you nodding your head you're like uh-huh yeah jack you're all work no play that's uh, that's kind of my default, and I acknowledge myself for that. And and you know, yesterday, you know, obviously, Hun and I were in a little WhatsApp channel with my family, and all the on in Canada was family day yesterday, so everybody was out playing hockey out on the lake, and um, you know, just when we were sharing with the students in class last week at at the in the course, you know, you know, some of the, and these students are younger, most of them in their twenties. And they, but they were talking about oh they used to love playing Nintendo, or they used to love playing Lego or swimming, or hockey or snowboarding you know all of these cool things, and it just and these are things that that I used to do that that I love and and they're so much fun, and I mean this this really con convolutes things when we come back to Patanjali's definition of yoga and you know relinquishing desires but. But being honest, you know, that we're humans engaging in the material world and just kind of realizing uh, a need for play. And and it's always like, oh, when for now, now it's like, oh, once I once I graduate from divinity school, then I'll have more time and I'll play. But Hanna, you know me, you know, there's going to be the next project, the next whatever. It's like, we got to make. You're cutting out. Oh, I froze. Yeah. I just feel like we got to make the time now. We got to, you know, eventually 
uh, have have fun now and play now. This like is- integrate it into your life as a normal part of of your life rather than waiting till you're done that's right because we have we have these beautiful moments like i'm just seeing right now we've got ryan he's out in the great canadian wilderness sun is shining oh my goodness look at the snow look at the look at the activity right we got sue Thank you to the few yogis who are with us uh, live, Amy, CC, uh, who are live with us in the Muskoka retreat um, this past summer. Because you remember that, hun, like any of our live programs, when we do guess who's in the house, right? And we just have so much fun. It's like a, a dance party, which is so fun to do together. And, and it just made me realize it's like when we play, that's that's when I feel the most alive. Right. And it doesn't it doesn't mean that these deep inquiry converse, I mean, in a way, like these really heartfelt, vulnerable, open conversations also make me feel alive, like in such a beautiful way and wake me up. But in a different way, you know, being playful, being joyful, being silly um, it is is important as well, it seems. Yeah. So what what's that going to look like now? How are you going to integrate play into your life? Oh yeah, pressure. Are on. you are you looking for a, looking for coaching? <laughs> yeah, I'm like looking around behind me. I didn't think of this. I, I I just came here to preach. I didn't come here to make. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, like I so badly would have wanted to play hockey with my family yesterday. Like to see those photos and the videos. They're all out there having a campfire roasting hot dogs and sausages. Okay. I wouldn't be eating hot dogs and sausages, but I would have been out there at the campfire and uh, skating and playing and, uh, you know, just doing the, like, I think that's, you know, I've shared with you, hon, I'm going to be home in two weeks for spring break. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to coming home, you know, not because anything is going bad at all. Like it's a beautiful flow here at the ashram at school. Um, but there's like, there's also a need to to connect with family and to and to do some fun stuff and that's so for me spring break you know truthfully i think i'll be pretty pretty busy for the next two weeks uh with school and work but you know let's why not this let's let's plan something fun let's uh let's go jump in the snow and let's uh play some hockey let's go public skating let's uh whatever i'm not sure if my snowboard survived the fire but (laughs) Yeah, but like even in your daily life there, uh, Ryan is saying you can play with your interactions with the divine anytime or, you know, skip or jump or, you know, tickle the kids who come to the ashram. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, something I do that, I mean, a a way that I play every day is like, I I have a, I have notes in my phone, like I have, um, because most of the people there speak Hindi. But there's also uh, two of the yogis who speak Tamil, which is a, a South Indian dialect. And so I'm learning, I'm learning the basics, like, hey, how are you? Uh, good morning, good evening, have fun, make it an amazing day, like just the, the fun stuff I say. And so every time I see them, like, because everybody else just says either like namaste or, or Hare Krishna, like a, just a nice greeting. Or I, I just start speaking to them in their language and and instantly it lights them up because I'm, you know, my accent's a little bit off or, you know, I I respond with not the typical response. You know, it's, it's that is that is my way of playing. And I think it's fun because, you know, sometimes there can be some seriousness. Sometimes there's playfulness at the ashram during Kirtan, but I think other times there's like a, a seriousness and a, and a, a withdrawing and an inwardness and so my way of playing is is engaging them and t- and getting them to smile. Like I go down, you know, I f- I almost feel a little guilty because I breakfast is available each day at eight thirty, but I need to get it at eight so I can get to class. And so I I go into the kitchen every morning at eight a.m. with a plate, you know, basically to dish up before anybody else gets their food. And you know that it's we've worked that out as an agreement. But I I make a point of like going to talk to the cook and. And, and he, you know, he doesn't barely speak any English. So I get to speak Hindi to him and get him to smile and thank him. And just like, whoa, this food is amazing. And I'm um, just doing whatever I can to, 
to get him to smile. And that, that feels good. And, and maybe that. partially, I'm, partially I'm doing, cause I feel guilty. I'm like, getting <laughs> food. I'm getting food before anybody else, you know, here again, am I some entitled or, you know, um, what's the word? Uh, anyways, but you know, so just doing, doing what I can. That's, that's my little way of playing. I love that. That's a good way of playing. And I know you're good at that game and it makes people laugh. Yeah. Makes especially in Finland. Laugh. Yeah. Any language that where you start talking, it's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a guy staying there now who is from Ukraine who understands Russian. So I get to practice my Russian. It's like, it's, you know, <laughs> just a few, a few basic words and it just like catches people, catches people right off. Mm -hmm. Um, we're, we're really rolling here. We're like 45 minutes into the podcast and I still have a few things to share, but I feel like um, maybe I'll, I'll just do them very briefly. Cause then I want to, well, let's see, I'll do them just cause they're right here and we might have to save some deep hot seat stuff. Uh, but I think we'll get at least one hot seat question with you. Um, so this is, this was a fun little, so maybe some of you have heard of Thich Nhat Han really beautiful Buddhist teacher. Um, he died just in 2022 at like the age of 95, uh, but really relevant to what we're talking about now. Obviously he had a lot of teachings and a lot of principles and I'm sure a lot of amazing books and advice. But one thing that he would say is that every day, every single day, the very first thing we can do is to smile This is the first thing that we do. We wake up and we smile. And uh and uh, and 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 then, and then he said, and then try it out again throughout the day. <laughs> uh, that is funny, you know. But I think what a what a great way to set an intention, right? Because there's 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 any number of things that we can think about and focus on and uh, and stress about every single day. Like I could I, I can think a thought right now. And put myself, I can, I can think of some things right now and put myself right into a suffering state, like, and nothing changed, but I, I could do that in a second. And I'm trying not to do, I'm trying not to think about those things, which are going to cause me to suffer, but it's like, all we've got to do is think a thought. And uh, so I like this idea of, of smiling. Yeah. Simply smile first thing and then try to go, try it out again throughout the day. <laughs> I love it. And that's also one way of playing and being playful with ourselves and with our nervous system and with life, you know, yeah. interacting and remembering that it doesn't have to be so heavy and hard all the time. You know, that's right. It doesn't, it right. doesn't let's, let's, let's embrace, let's embrace the play. Um, I want to something, something else fun. I wanted to share, this is this is probably not relevant for so many, but it's kind of fun. I'm going to share my screen in a second here, uh, which only works for those who are here live with us. But right here, like this room I'm sitting in right now at the Harvard Innovation Lab. So I was here a couple of weeks ago and, and I see this guy and he's like massive, huge, like six foot nine, I found out after how tall. And, and I immediately recognized him. His name is Zidane Ochara. He's the, he was the captain of the Boston Bruins, the NHL hockey team here locally. You know, he's a legend, played in the NHL for 24 years, won the trophy for best defenseman of the league, won the Stanley Cup, first European to, you know, be a captain that won the Stanley Cup, like all of these things. He's, he's a legend. And now he's really big into marathon running. You know, he's, he's, a few, few, he's between, between me and you, Hanna. So he's like mid forties in age. And he's really big into marathon running. And the, the first day I saw him, you know, I, I knew it immediately who it was, but I, you know, he was talking to someone and I didn't, you know, I'm not going to be some fan and rock, walk up and try and get his, you know, photo or something. So I, so, so I took a photo of him from behind, <laughs> which I'm going to show here <laughs> just to prove that I saw him. Um, where, where's my screen? There it is. Yeah. So of course, if you're on the podcast, you can't see, but here, here's a photo of him from behind. And I talked to that woman after, and that woman that he's standing beside is taller than me. Okay. So just to give you perspective, like he, he's a tall individual. And then, um, so, so that's all that happened. And I, and I told my family who was all, you know, hockey fans and they're like, Whoa, cool. And then I saw him again. I saw him again, like the following week. And this time he was standing there by himself. 
And I thought, and, I, and so I'm going through all this dialogue in my mind. I'm like, I don't want to be up, go up and be the typical fan of like, hey, take a photo with me. And so I was like, well, I know he's really into running. And I'm like, I'm into running. I love. And uh, so I went up and I'm just like, Zidane Ochara, happy Jack. Nice to meet you. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and I just started, you know, here's what we can learn from it. I just really started not glorifying him for his hockey career because that's what everybody knows him for but his current passion is running and just like really thank him for sharing his story because he's very active on social media and and doing a lot of you know fundraising and charity stuff for his running and and i was like hey i love to run as well i go i go run first thing in the morning when it's still dark and he's like me too you know that's when when he does his running he's like yeah it feels like the whole world is sleeping and he's out training and so we had like a, just a really nice conversation. And then, and at the end I said, do you mind if we get it? Do you mind if we get a selfie? <laughs> so I did. So I'll share, I'll pull up the other photo. We did, we got a selfie. So here he is. Um, here we are for those who are live. Of course, if you're on the podcast, you can't, but anyways, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's fun when you look people. so tiny. <laughs> yeah. And he, he probably like bent down. He's, <laughs> He's literally <laughs> like, otherwise he doesn't fit in the frame. Yeah. I mean, he's, like, he's like so 30, tiny. he's 30 centimeters taller than me. Like he's, or something like that. Um, yeah. More than that. Funny. But, um, you know, it's the, I get the, the point being here, here's what we can draw from it from as, as yoga teachers, like sometimes we're going to meet inspiring people. And I, I've, I know that I've messed it up before, like with, famous people or something like that. And if we go in like wanting something from them, if, if I, if I, if we lead with, Hey, can I get a photo of you? Well, he gets that every day. Right. And it's like, Oh, you know, he's a nice guy. So he would have done it, but it's like, if we can figure out how to create, create rapport, create a relationship with, and it's like, okay, I know. And I'm not trying to influence, I'm not trying to trick, but it's like, I would, I would want to have a meaningful conversation, not just a selfie. And so we can do this with our yoga students, you know, not trying to get a selfie, but really thinking, well, what is this person interested in? What is it that they value? You know, um, what, what, you know, these kinds of things. And then just being curious and asking those questions because people love, people love to share about themselves. They love to share about what they're um, currently passionate about. So I thought that was a little fun experience. Yeah, that was fun. And also kind of creative and courageous of you you know to create that connection yeah mm -hmm. yeah so so that's so i'm sure honestly probably most of you who are watching and listening have no idea who zidane ochara is um and it doesn't matter that's okay but anyway he's uh, uh it's a fun little anecdote the last thing i wanted to leave with i'm going to squeeze this in it's been on my schedule for the last two episodes and i didn't we didn't have time so I'm going to save, a, if it's okay, Hanna, a big uh, a big hot seat for you next week. And I wanted to share this. This is an experience that I had um, during, it's our, our meaning-making course. And this is where we really reflect theologically about our field education. So the time I'm doing at the ashram. And we had to come up with a, a moment and share with our fellow students, a moment where we felt... Uh, you know, out of our comfort zone or kind of, or challenged us in some way or brought up some emotion in some way. And so I'm going to share the, I'm going to share what I shared with the students. I'm going to read it It'll just take like two minutes. And, and then we can think about it and think about how, how this might apply to us and how, how as yogis, we can, we can, you know, react, non-react, etc. So this is, um, so here it, it kind of sets the scene. So so I'm I'm at the I'm at the temple. So it says I'm sitting down to enjoy breakfast at the ashram. I must admit, this is one of my favorite moments of the field ed placement, as we get to engage in meaningful theological conversation in a relaxed atmosphere. It's a time when the yogis we sit together on the floor and we eat the the prasadam, which is you know sanctified food offered to the divine. So I get my usual kitchari. This is an Ayurvedic cleansing dish made of rice, lentils, vegetables, and mild spices. I absolutely love it, especially now as the days grow colder. 
As I was dishing up kitchery and skipping the chapati, the, the bread, I noticed there was a new dish that I had not seen before. I was pretty sure that I would not eat it as it looked a little dessert-like, dessert -like, but I was curious and asked a nearby yogi what it was. I forget what it was called, but from the description, it was not for me. It was mostly sugar and bread. Sounds tasty, but I'll pass. Thanks, I said. But this is prasadam. You must take it. Just eat it, one of the yogis explained. Uh, yes, I'm sure it's very special, but I'll pass. I don't eat sugar, I politely replied. Seriously? Wow, that is extreme. Why not? Another yogi exclaimed. Well, 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer, and I'm grateful to be cancer-free now. But since I went through that experience and learned about the impact of sugar, I decided to stop eating it altogether. At this point, it appeared that both of the yogis felt a little sheepish for being so adamant that I eat the dessert. Perhaps having sensed that uh, he applied more pressure than necessary, the one yogi started asking me rapid fire questions about how I discovered yoga. I sensed that he wanted to reestablish a connection with me and make sure everything was good with us. I answered his questions, but found myself not wanting to be in the conversation. I finished eating much quicker than normal and politely excused myself. I'm used to being the weird one when it comes to food, being vegan, gluten-free, sugar-free, alcohol-free, caffeine-free, you know, all for more than a decade. I don't preach my nutrition choices to others, but it works for me. But for the rest of the morning, I carried on as though everything was fine, but inside I'd completely shut down. And although I'm sure their intention was not to offend me, I didn't want to be in the presence of those two yogis for the rest of the day. And so that was just an experience that I had. And, you know, certainly not sharing in any way to, to criticize or make anyone wrong, but just kind of noticing how in certain circumstances, how we can react, right? Sometimes we might, some people, what there's the options, fight, flight, or freeze. And kind of my, my tendency is more the freeze or flight, take off. Um, but it just like noted, just kind of noticing our reactions. And this is where we can practice yoga. I don't know if you hear anything in that. Did anything stand out to you, Hanna? No, I would want to know why did you share this? Like, what's the takeaway for you from this? Well, that's the, that's the whole point. And that, so that's why the, the exercise for sharing was to share an experience, but not provide any kind of like, oh, this is what I learned or this is what I think, because then it, it generated conversation with the class um, so that we could we could really be like, hey, if I was in that situation, I might have felt this or I might have said this or I might have done this. So I don't I mean, I'm sure I could tell you what I was thinking, but I guess I guess maybe for the the purpose of this podcast, I thought you know, it'd be interesting just being aware or just, you know, doing these practices of reflecting when, when certain things happen, writing them down, sharing them, being in dialogue. Again, I, I don't have some big takeaway. I'm sure I could create one. Um, but I think, I think it's really nice. This is like, for me, a limb, an aspect of yoga, right? So sometimes we're, sometimes we're doing the meditation and like st stilling the thoughts Sometimes we're we're cultivating our love and our attraction for the divine. Sometimes we're chanting mantras. Sometimes we're picking up spilt milk, and and, and other times we're we're reflecting on how we react in certain circumstances. And it's like this is why I think yoga is so cool. And this is why it's not just exercise, right? If people think, oh, it's just stretching, like stretch stretching is stretching. But it, when we're doing the asana plus all of these other elements. This is what makes it yoga. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting inquiry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so with that, maybe just, just for the last, cause we got three minutes just to open it up for uh, Hanna when we get to hot seat you next week, we're going to leave you. We're going to leave you with this bomb. Let's see if we can catch you in a, in a cup. No, I'm just kidding. It's not a bomb. Imagine you had one day left in your life. What do you regret not doing? Wow, that is a gut punch. Whew. Do I have to answer that in three minutes? Yeah. Eh, like, does it have to? So 
if I have one one day left, did you say? Yeah, one day left. So ba basically, it's like maybe you did you don't have time. Like not not a thing. Oh, I could go do that on my last day, but it's like wow, yeah. this is my last day. I'm not gonna have time to do that thing. Well, I think like the immediate response is like related to love and like I guess like loving even more fully and with everything that I am uh, you know or holding back and not participating in life fully or in in relationship to other people you know because I mean, I, I feel like I've done everything. I've been to Bali. I've been around the globe. Uh, been so blessed in so many ways. But when I look at my younger self, maybe I was a bit shy or held back because I didn't really fully know who I am and how strong and multifaceted I am and how big of a flame of love is inside of me that's what I would want to live um, since I don't have only one day left. So then I also choose that, to, you know, as my kind of active legacy to live in love fearlessly. Nice. Mm. I love that. Seeing some, some hearts coming through the chat as well. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's, I think that's going to open up well um, for the, for the upcoming, uh, let's let's make the next podcast. We're gonna do a nice hot seat because I've got seven. <laughs> so there's seven, more. <laughs> there's more. I, more. I got seven good questions oh, we want to dive into. Um, but I think you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, a lot of great topics. I feel like in different areas, from the classical yoga to the bhakti yoga to the karma yoga of the service to the the self inquiry and and noticing our our better sides and, and areas for growth. You know, it's all yoga. It's yeah. all yoga. It it's is. very cool. And, and, you know, we got our friend Brandon running on the treadmill here with us right now. Right now we're doing a course, AI and social media skills for yoga teachers. Like there's, you know, there's technology even can, you know, it's not, it's not part of the yoga system per se, but there's a way to use it to, to spread the word, to spread the love. And so that's pretty cool. So our friends, Thank you for taking the time to join us here. If you want to come practice yoga with us, send us an email info at happyjackyoga.com. If you haven't already, we got one more, we got one more like or five-star review on Spotify. So I'm just going to shamelessly put it out there. If you're, if you're out there and you haven't uh, given us a, a rating yet on Spotify or, or Apple, please do. And yeah, make it an amazing rest of the day. And I, I feel filled up and I'm, I'm inspired, Hanna, by your your jump in the snow and uh all good vibes thank you namaste friends thank you for being here mm.